Maybe some of the best news over the weekend is that John Denman has decided to take his talents to purple horny toad country, meaning top target and four-star consensus running back Michael Turner Jr. might still be in play to be a Mustang, so they say. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on X at All Day O State. Today, we're partially brought to you by Game Time Tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Get in on the action today. Make sure you download that app. We get to get started in the running back field. And as we discussed previously, uh, Friday, John Denman had a decision to make over the weekend. Now he did decide to take his talents to TCU, meaning that Michael Turner Jr. is still available. Now, as most people have prognosticated thus far, he seems to be trending towards being an SMU Mustang. Now, you got to give a shout out to SMU. Recently, they've done very, very well, especially in the recruiting market. But whenever you look at some of the decisions that he had to make, the prognostications aren't always a good indication of how it's going to go because there are still some expert punditry saying that he'll end up at OU, a school that's not even on his top six. And now that John Denman is a TCU purple horny toad, this is likely down to a top five. And from what I've been able to gather, let's face it, Mizzou, financially, they make some sense. But every other realm of possibility for Michael Turner Jr. becoming a Tiger doesn't make any sense. So let's narrow this thing down here. Maybe it's Oklahoma State, Baylor, SMU. Well, whatever you're going to take in this, this conversation, let's face it. Baylor is nowhere near the same level as Oklahoma State right now. Their recent success when it comes to the Big 12 title games is nothing to be understated. But at the same time, if you're looking at the longevity of a career and the ability to have a massive amount of production equaling NFL capabilities, TCU and Oklahoma State aren't exactly on equal footing. And that's where we bring into the equation the SMU Mustangs. What they've been able to do recently is very impressive. The question is, can they land Michael Turner Jr.? And the real question maybe should be, what does Michael Turner Jr. look at? Well, in 2003, his dad was good enough to be a four-star get out of Dunbar High School for the Wisconsin Badgers. This is the time for Oklahoma State to capitalize on this scenario. Guys, you know I love my comps here. And as it says there in segment one, if Justice Hill was a little bit bigger, he might be Michael Turner Jr. If Michael Turner Jr. was a little bit bigger, he might be Tatum the Legend Bell. And what is the, met, the most amount of poetic justice I can think of would be us calling for Deuce Bell getting loose right next to Michael Turner Jr. taking the keys to the backfield. SMU, Oklahoma State. Whenever you align the two up on paper, there's a lot of things that definitely do make some sense. There's also some things that don't. Oklahoma State is known for having the only strength coach in America making over $1.1 million in Rob Glass. There's a reason for that. Whenever you look at SMU, historically, it does garner a lot of uh, attention, as it should. The Doak Walker Award is naturally given to the greatest running back in college football each year. Most recent recipient being Oklahoma State's own Ollie Gordon. You go back and think of the days of, of Eric D Dickerson. And maybe they're prepared to pony up the Express financially right here, right now for Michael Turner Jr. And that very well may be the case. But I'm assuming that Michael Turner Jr. is not just looking at the direct benefit year one. I would imagine that Michael Turner Jr. is also looking at what's most beneficial for him as he decides to make his career choice. Because, let's face it, this is a career. This is a business move. This is a business decision. And Oklahoma State is the best to get you in the business of being an NFL running back. Guys, the last time SMU had a running back drafted was 1986. So 38 years ago, the SMU Mustangs did have a running back drafted. In that 38-year time frame, Oklahoma State has produced 11 drafted running backs. In the last 38 years, Oklahoma State has produced more drafted running backs than the last 88 years of SMU football has. So again, if you want to talk about the legends of Doak Walker and Eric Dickerson, for sure. But they don't stack up to the current list of Cowboys in the NFL as it sits right now. 
most people are going to be very well aware that Tyreek Keel is a bad mama jamma and that he was a cowboy, but maybe not everybody's aware that he was a running back at Oklahoma State. Just like people are going to look to see what Justice Hill does as a Baltimore Raven, as they're going to look to see what Chuba Hubbard does now in this next year under the Carolina Panthers' new system. Jalen Warren has proven to be the bee's knees up as, in Pittsburgh as a Steeler, pushing Najee Harris for RB1 carries. This is the lineage that we have most recently, not even necessarily taking into consideration the legends of the game, your Barry Sanders, your Thurman Thomas, your Tatum Bells of the world. This is in conversation for running back you, something that SMU does not have the ability to present. If you're looking for development, Oklahoma State has you. If you're looking for the next ticket to the NFL, Oklahoma State has you. And furthermore, if you're looking for the most amount of opportunities, as we've said before, it's going to be at Oklahoma State. SMU is making this transition to the ACC. And playing in the ACC could be a big deal, but could also be hanging on to a death sentence. Not the death penalty, but a death sentence. SMU paid $200 million and willingly gave over nine years' worth of profit just to be in a conference that is seemingly dying a conference that may or may not even exist in the next 24 months. So if this is just about playing time, then maybe it does make sense. If this is just about financial gain, maybe it does make sense. But as Ollie Gordon was able to just prove you can win the Doak Walker Award at Oklahoma State, you can be a top five Heisman guy all day, every day, and financially be able to make more money than you ever thought possible. See, our NIL collective was able to fork over the cash necessary to keep Ollie Gordon and Kendall Daniels and Justin Kirkland and Alan Bowman even. The Eagle Low wide receiver Brennan Presley had places out of the wazoo he could have gone to, including wazoo. But he stayed put. This is because of the NIL dollars that are associated with Oklahoma State. That's the thing is we're not going to push out $200 million publicly to produce anything unnaturally. What we are going to do is get the most out of each individual player, not only because of Rob Glass, but also because of the system. Plus, the offensive line is not going to be downgraded anytime soon because we still have Charlie Dickey. And how do we know that? Because Charlie Dickey just signed an extension on his contract, as did every other coach on the daggone staff. So the, the one school that you can look to for consistency in, in coaching is Oklahoma State. How many coaches do we have that have been on the staff for eight years, nine years, 12 years, 14 years, 15 years? It's an exorbitant number. So this shouldn't just be about one of the most talented running backs in the country going to the most financially wealthy places in the country. Because let's face it, guys, Texas A&M, Miami, Mizzou, they're all trying to buy titles, and thus far, it has not worked. Florida State did do a very good job, I would say, in NIL to get the season that they had last year. But the ACC is so revered around the country that the playoff committee didn't even let an undefeated team in. The Big 12 is a better brand, regardless of what some of the prognostications out there like to present. The Big 12 is going to be a more reputable brand as the years continue to come down the pipeline. And the ACC currently is scared to death of the idea of Brett Yormark being the visionary that he is welcoming in this new era of private money and the, the liquid sponsorships. This is an amazing time to be a Cowboy fan. It would be an even better time if Michael Turner Jr. was able to bring his talents to Stillwater, Oklahoma. I understand there's some benefits, but I also understand that you, sir, need to bring your 1,668 yards, 26 touchdowns on the ground to Stillwater, America, where we can produce that same number all day, every day. Again, if he was a little bit bigger, Justice Hill, he'd be Tatum Bell. And Tatum Bell is one of the Cowboys that I see on film when I click on Michael Turner Jr. It's not just the speed and the elusivity. Typically, whenever you're running an 11-second, 100-meter dash, and you have an 18-7-5 long jump, you have a propensity to try to bounce everything to the outside because you're typically going to be able to outrun everybody else on the field. But Michael Turner Jr. does not do that. He sticks his foot in the ground. He gets north and south for somebody that is significantly bigger. 
a.k.a. he plays bigger than he is. He runs faster than he even looks on film, and he's more elusive than most of the running backs we currently have on campus. He's more elusive than most of the running backs that are being recruited across the country right now. The running back position is not viewed as a hot commodity as much as it used to be in the NFL. But Oklahoma State has not had an issue getting the most out of the running backs in college into the NFL where they're playing right here, right now. So if you want to click on Sundays and watch an SMU Mustang tote the rock, it ain't going to happen. But if you want to click on Sundays and see several Cowboys toting the rock, that's not only going to happen, but Ollie Gordon's going to follow it up again. But we've got to have more in the pipeline. We've got to have more Berries, more Thurmans, more Terrys, more Ollies. And Michael Turner Jr. is just that. Playing in front of 60,000 people is better than playing in front of 30,000 people. Playing extra games and Big 12 titles and CFP Saturdays means more opportunities for you. These are things that SMU likely won't be able to accomplish in the near future. Even while going to a conference that is fledgling, flailing, and trying to stay afloat, they're still not projected to win it. And maybe as time goes on, it's a possibility. But I'm pretty sure Michael Turner Jr. is invested in his future. So I don't think he's going to be taking um, unnecessary risks. If you weigh the pros and cons, and you weigh the availability that Oklahoma State has to get you on the field and in the NFL ASAP, this is a logical choice. And this is a, a logical decision for you to make. Shouldn't be Baylor. It's not going to be TCU. It absolutely shouldn't be Mizzou. You should be a Cowboy instead of tinkering around at SMU, a place I do have respect for. It's just not the same. So here we are. We also get to transition into the preseason All-Big 12 team. Of course, Oklahoma State led the way with six Cowboys. A large number of those are going to be representing the Cowboys as well at Big 12 Media Day. But before we do that, we do have to remind the fine folks out here, as we're all preparing for this season, we need to make sure that we have the ticket game squared away. The hotels, the travel, the rentals, all that stuff is just not fun. The fun fact is when you get to go to the game, all the experiences make up for some of the craziness. So stop the craziness in the beginning by downloading the Game Time app today. It is the only place where you can know that you're going to get the best deals, not only at the beginning of the game, but even up to an hour afterwards. It is the authorized marketplace for ticket buying experiences for Major League Baseball. They're going to give you the best chance of getting your tickets faster and easier. The prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that you get to the game or the pitch or the event. Because this isn't just about sports. Whether you're interested in music, comedy, theater, or games, Game Time is the ticket for you. The flash deals means you get to save even more when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seat. The panoramic view allows you to know exactly what you're getting before you get into the stadium. There's no hooligan and hanky-panky of getting put in a different section. Plus, the lowest price guarantee means that Game Time will credit you back 110% of the difference if you find it cheaper and better because it ain't going to happen. Make sure that you rock with the best by download the Game Time app today. Download the app. Create an account and use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, that is L O C K E D O N C O L E G E for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. But again, create an account, redeem that code, download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. It is a guarantee that some of the Cowboys will, in fact, be making the trip to Vegas, as you all guys know i did announce the live show um i had a travel partner that uh, kind of had a, a work thing pop up therefore i'm not gonna go to las vegas i am instead gonna go to my son's baseball tournament edmond oklahoma i'm very blessed to have um a, a lot of the fellas showing up to show some support some support so instead of doing that i'm gonna go to the baseball game and hang out with with some of the the cowboys some of the cowboys that will be featured are heading to Vegas. And those are obviously Ollie Gordon, Alan Bowman, Brennan Presley, 
and you got to get show some love for the big guy, Joe Maholski. Even though he didn't get to go and rep the O-line, we still have Nick Martin helping out with the defensive uh, stuff. This is basically going to be revolving around the fact that Ollie Gordon is, in fact, making his, his appearance at Big 12 Media Days. It's going to be a long day for Ollie, but Mike Gundy obviously knows that. A lot of people anticipated the fact that we would maybe slide somebody in like a Joe Maholsky to make the trip instead of Ollie Gordon. The fact that Ollie Gordon is still going means that he's very prepared to field all of these questions and to take this thing head on. I also think that's a pretty good indication that he's going to get the one-game suspension. If he was going to be out for a multitude of games, I don't know that he'd be making this trip, or at least I don't know that he would be asked to be making this trip. But he is, in fact, doing that, which means all of the questions that he's going to get are somewhat prepared for, or at least he knows they're coming. I think that is a very good sign for Cowboy Country. Alan Bowman's going to be great in front of a camera. Nick Martin's going to be able to discuss some of the little things, the intricacies of what this defense could provide for the country to see in 2024. And Colin Oliver is the main dude, right? So no Brendan Presley, no Joe Maholsky, but we do get Ollie Gordon. We do get Colin Oliver. This is a really good representation, just like there's a lot of representation for Oklahoma State. On the, so essentially, some of the guys that are on the all-Big 12 team May not make their appearance in Vegas, but that's all right. So let's break down the Cowboys that will, in fact, be part of the preseason All-Big 12 team. Of course, you have Ollie Gordon as the preseason offensive MVP. And you also have a defensive back, Travis Hunter, being the defensive MVP. And then you have the newcomer of the year, UCF quarterback, K.J. Jefferson. I said the other day I wanted to kick a little game for K-State, and this is what I'll say. For newcomer of the year, I'm not a massive believer in K.J. Jefferson. I would have gone with Easton Kilty. Easton Kilty was, was probably the top offensive lineman I wanted, the transfer portal, and Kansas State was able to be the recipient of that dude. As they break in their new quarterback, Avery Johnson, they have an extra addition in the backfield now to go alongside D.J. Giddens. Should be a big year for Kansas State, and I do think that uh, that he's one of the main reasons why. You had to solidify that O-line, so we got to show some love for K-State. I think he should have been newcomer of the year, but let's jump off in it. Quarterback Shador Sanders, Colorado. Running back, Ollie Gordon. Taj Brooks, Texas Tech. Running back, fullback, Steve O'Klotz, Iowa State. Teddy, Teddy Ora, oh my goodness, I just murdered that name. Tedaroa, McMillan, Arizona, Kobe Hudson, UCF, Jaden Higgins, Iowa State, Brennan Presley, Oklahoma State, wide receivers, tied in, Brian Coot, Utah. O lineman, I can't say Joe, Jonah's a last name from Arizona. Luke Kandra from Cincinnati, Dalton Cooper, Oklahoma State, Joe Mahalski, Oklahoma State, Wyatt Millam, West Virginia, Tyler Loop is the, the place kicker from Arizona. Kick returner, Dre McCray from Texas Tech. That's the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, you got Tyler Batty, BYU. Dante Carleon, Cincinnati. B.J. Green, Colorado. UCF Lee Hunter. Then you have a defensive line, Junior Tufana from Utah. Linebackers, Jacob Manu, Arizona. Nick Martin, Oklahoma State. Colin Oliver, Oklahoma State. Takario Davis, Arizona. DB. Another DB, Travis Hunter, Colorado. Another DB, Jeremiah Cooper, Iowa State, DB, Kobe Bryant, Kansas, DB, Melo Dotson, Kansas, and the punter, Jack Baumeister out of Utah. That is your preseason All-Big 12 squad. Oklahoma State has so much representation, not only in this, but it, it did make sense. You could have picked any one of those six to go to Big 12 Media Days, but the representation that we do have is beyond adequate. And again, the highlight of it all is going to be the fact that Ollie Gordon is not only still going, but the media department, Mike Gundy, everybody is very well aware that he's going to be circled in like sharks to the frenzy. But this is a good time for Ollie Gordon to be able to kind of publicly put himself a little bit more on display, talk about what happened, how ridiculous it was, and what he is deciding to do to fix it moving forward. Speaking of moving forward, we'll shift to segment three here before we skedaddle on out of here. We got to give a shout out to former Cowboy Justin Robleski. He made his debut Sunday in the 
Major League Baseball Department with the Dodgers. He went two scoreless innings and had four Ks along the way. The lefty cowboy made it look somewhat easy, which means he's definitely going to get far more opportunities in the major leagues with the Dodgers in the foreseeable future. There's some other dudes that I think people are kind of curious about, and I think they're going to be making their call-ups at some point in time pretty quickly, is Trevor Boone. Peyton Battenfield is definitely worth the watch. Rock Reggio, uh, just a few a couple, couple weeks ago, he batted 333 and had like um, double-digit RBIs, and he was putting the ball over the fence as well as making some defensive web gym plays. He's another one to kind of watch out for. Colin Simpson is a name that everybody kind of needs to continue to pay attention to, as is Nolan McClain. And uh, our main man, Mr. Two-Way number two, right after Nolan McClain and Garrett ben or Carson Benj coming up in this upcoming draft. There are several Cowboys that are kind of bouncing around in the AAA range that should be called up pretty soon. So those are some more names to pay attention to in Cowboy baseball country that could be called up uh, here pretty daggone quickly. Of course, everybody had a, a large, large amount of satisfaction in what the Cincinnati Reds were able to do because Ellie De La Cruz and Christian Encarnacion Strand were all over some of the Reds' highlights from the season, even early on. Christian Encarnacion Strand is worth every watch, even though he recently dealt with a little bit of some injury situations. But you had a, a former Cowboy, Jordy Mercer, Mercer, now on the staff in Stillwater. That should be huge. You have another big-time top-10 class coming into Stillwater. It's not a question of whether we're going to bring in the talent for Josh Holiday. It's a question of how many of these dudes actually end up on campus. I'm hoping Cash is definitely one of them. We need that Oki who brings a little bit of that extra spark and spunk to kind of carry over from where Carson Binge left off. But there's other dudes that are in play for Oklahoma State. I think Rob Walton has done a phenomenal job in the transfer portal building this, this pitching staff kind of back up. There's some guys in there that maybe the ERA doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies, but neither did some guys previously like Sam Garcia. And Rob Walton was able to kind of help them in, in the developmental areas to get him to where he was last season. And, and previously, we had uh, all the Stillwater High closer, Isaac, Isaac Stebbins. So Rob can still develop. Rob still can definitely bring in some of the, the top guys from the country that are extremely interested in becoming Cowboys. We got to, um, you know, obviously work a little bit on the placement or timing of when to pull pitchers, but that wasn't the issue during regionals. Regionals was even more devastating because of how well we were set up for the Super. The fact that we had... So much of the bullpen available, it set us up for a deep run. But it's a deep run we never even got to experience. So basically, we had a bunch of arms ready to go for Super Regionals that didn't necessarily pitch a whole lot coming into, that never even got the usage that they were looking for or that we were looking for to get out of them. So we got to get rid of the, the sour taste of the way the Regionals went. I think we're well on the way. And seeing some of these former Cowboys get their shot in the major leagues is, I think, just a, another injection of positivity for Cowboy baseball, even after a season where the regionals didn't go like we wanted. Any but who? I reckon that's all we're going to have for this one right here. Feel good about Michael Turner Jr. Feel good about Ollie Gordon representing at, at Big 12 Media Days. I think we should all still feel good that Joe Mahalski and Brendan Presley are at home, right, helping hold down the fort because we've got enough dudes for the representation. This is the season. All right, y'all. That's all we're going to have for this one right here. As always, you know I love you. God bless. Go, folks. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here on Locked on Oklahoma State. Like it if you like the daggone thing. Dislike it if you don't. That's okay, too. More importantly, share, comment, and subscribe. My podcast and folks, you know the drill. You're the bread, the butter, the bricks, the foundation. Do what you do. Hit a stars. Leave a review. All right, y'all. Later, taters.